Hi, and welcome back to Enigmatic Universe. I'm Clifton 3D, and today we're going to be talking about Eric the Red. Eric Thorvaldsen, better known as Eric the Red. Who was he? Was he just some Viking? How did he get the name The Red? And what did he do in life? Or is he only known for founding Greenland? Together, we're going to be exploring this famous Viking. Eric Thorvaldsen was born 950 CE in Rogaland, Norway. He was the son of Thorvald Oswinson. Due to a manslaughter incident, Thorvald was exiled from Norway, thus creating a family tradition in the conflict resolution area. Seeking a new life for himself, he embarked westward of Norway together with his family and, of course, the young Eric. They settled in Hornstrandir, a region in northwestern Iceland, where Thorwald lived until his passing before the year 1000 CE. So we've reached the part of the video where I need to give you a small disclaimer. Everything I've said so far and everything I will say after this disclaimer, take it with a grain of salt. Everything I'm telling you could be true, or it also couldn't be true. Am I intentionally fibbing you? I'm definitely not. I'm giving you information that I've found on the internet. That being said, at the time of Eric the Red's life, history sagas, adventures, were continued on through oral accounts. There was no written history. Now, of course, the saga of Eric the Red and the Greenlanders came much, much later. That being said, again, please take everything with a grain of salt. I'm not trying to fib you. I'm just telling you what we believe could be possible. After Eric who earned the nickname Eric the Red in his youth due to his red hair, faced a similar exile from Iceland around 980, he made the decision to venture towards the west and explore new lands, eventually reaching Greenland. However, I might be getting a little ahead of myself. Following in the footsteps of his father, Eric also experienced a period of exile. The situation unfolded when his slaves, known as Thralls, triggered a landslide on the adjacent farm owned by Vathof, whose friend, Ijof the Fowl, took the lives of the thralls. Seeking retribution, Eric retaliated by killing Ijof. Due to the demands of Ijof's relatives for Eric's explosion from Hadakal, he was later sentenced by the Icelanders to three years of exile as punishment for the slaying of Ijof the Fowl which occurred approximately in the year 982. Eric the Red's discovery of Greenland. Although Eric is commonly recognized as the first European to discover Greenland in popular history, the Icelandic saga suggests that earlier Norsemen actually discovered and attempted to settle the land before him. Gunnbjörn Ulfsson is traditionally credited with the initial sighting of the land about a century before Eric. Strong winds had blown Gunnbjörn towards the land he named Gunnbjörn's Skerries. However, the accidental nature of Gunnbjörn's discovery has resulted in his omission from the Greenland's history. Following Gunnbjörn, Snirbjörn Galti also visited Greenland. Historical records indicate that Galti led the first Norse expedition to colonize Greenland but it ended in disaster. Nevertheless, Eric the Red became the first permanent European settler. Around 982, during his period of exile, Eric embarked on a voyage to a relatively unknown and mysterious land that Snebron Galti had previously attempted to settle but failed. Eric sailed around the southern tip of the island, later called Cape Farewell, and continued along the western coast. Eventually, he reached a mostly ice-free region that resembled Iceland and showed promise for growth and prosperity. 
According to the saga of Eric the Red, he spent three years exploring the land during his exile. When Eric returned to Iceland after his exile ended, he shared stories of the land he named Greenland, deliberately, aiming to attract potential settlers. He believed that a favorable name would entice more people to go there, knowing that the success of a settlement in Greenland relied on widespread support. His tactics proved successful, as many individuals, particularly those Vikings living on poor land in Iceland, and those affected by a recent famine became convinced that Greenland held great opportunities. In 985, after spending the winter in Iceland, Eric returned to Greenland with a substantial number of colonists. Out of the 25 ships that set sail, 11 were lost at sea, with only 14 reaching their destination. The Icelanders established two colonies on the southwest coast. The eastern settlement Eistiburgu, I'm sorry if I mispronounced these, and the western settlement near Nuuk. Over time, a middle settlement emerged, though some suggest it was part of the western settlement. The eastern and western settlements were the only viable areas for farming. During the summers, when travel conditions were more favorable, each settlement sent men to hunt in Disco Bay, above the Arctic Circle, for food and valuable resources, such as seals, ivory from walrus tusks, and beached whales. In the eastern settlement, Eric established the estate Bratolio. He held the prestigious position of Paramount Chieftain of Greenland and gained both immense respect and wealth. The settlement thrived and expanded with approximately 5,000 inhabitants spread across a significant area along Eric's Ford and nearby forts. Additional groups of immigrants seeking refuge from overpopulation in Iceland joined the original settlers. However, in 1002, a group of immigrants arrived unknowingly, carrying an epidemic that devastated the colony. Many prominent individuals, including Eric himself, fell victim to the disease. Despite this setback, the colony recovered and persisted until the onslaught of the Little Ice Age, which made the land unsuitable for European lifestyles in the 15th century, shortly before Christopher Columbus's inaugural voyage to the Americas in 1492. Factors such as pirate raids, conflicts with Inuit tribes, encroaching upon Norse territories, and the abandonment of the colony by Norway also contributed to its decline. The saga of Eric the Red and the Greenland saga share numerous similarities, including some of the same reoccurring characters, the retelling of expeditions that happened, or there are some notable differences. In the saga of Eric the Red, several expeditions mentioned in the Greenland saga are presented as a single expedition, led by Thorfinn Karlsefni. However, Eric's son, Thorwald, his daughter Freydis and Karlsefni's wife, Gudrid, play significant roles in the narrative. Another notable distinction lies in the location of their settlements. According to the Greenland saga, Karlsefni and the others settled in an unnamed place referred to as Vinland. On the other hand, Eric the Red's saga portrays two main settlements, Straufordjur where they spent the winter and spring, and Hop, where they later settled but encountered difficulties with the indigenous people referred to as Scalings, as depicted in the Greenland Saga. Aside from these differences, the two accounts share a strong focus on the adventures of Thorfinn Karlsefni and his wife Gudrid. So a few notable things about Eric the Red is he married Thjordhild, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, in fact, all of the names in this video, I wholeheartedly suggest looking them up and just expecting me to have mispronounced them. They had four children together, one daughter named Fridas, and three sons. Most notably, Leif Erikson. 
Then there was Thorvald and Thorstein. Or Thorstein, I'm not sure. Guessing guessing it's probably not Steen. They were Norse. Now, Leif Erikson and his wife embraced Christianity. Um, while Eric himself continued to adhere to the North paganism. Now, his wife also wholeheartedly embraced Christianity, commissioning Greenland's first Catholic or Christian church. Now, <clears throat> Eric strongly disliked this. He didn't care for the new faith, and he remained loyal to the Norse gods, which in return um, made his wife... Uh, they lay not together. <laughs> there was no intimacy between them because uh, she was Christian and he didn't want to conform. So, take it as you will. This is part of the saga, actually. So, all that being said, I think it's very interesting. Eric the Red is a very interesting character from beginning of his life to the end where his father... You know, started the family tradition, he made it the tradition by continuing to just murder his way through conflicts. That being said, there are so many more stories connected to this, especially with people like his son, Leif Erikson, and uh, definitely a very interesting person is Thorfinn. If, uh, if you're interested, <laughs> um, learn more about Finland itself, and uh, this is with a B I N Finland. Uh, there are more stories about that, and if uh, you're interested in anime, heck, I would even uh, I would I would suggest that you go and watch this on Netflix. There's the Netflix, you know. They have the anime Vinland Saga, and so far it looks really interesting. How historic it is, I don't know. I think it's an interpretation, which is basically everything in this video as well. So take it with a grain of salt, but it, it definitely looks good. Anyway, that is, is this video. This is the first time I've made a video like this. I am not entirely happy with how it turned out. I am hoping that if I continue to do videos like this, and that you like this video, I will get better at videos like this. Really hoping I can. Nonetheless, I still enjoyed it, making this video, learning new things for this video, and yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Let me know what you think about the topic that we talked about today. And you know, just let me know what you think of this video, how I can make it better, or how I, well, how I can make future videos better. Let me know. If you like this video, smash that like button. Consider subscribing and hitting the bell for notifications. But before I go, I want to say one more thing. This video definitely takes up more time and if I want to move forward with these videos, I definitely need your support. Putting in more time in this, I, I know I took my time with this first video because I was learning a lot more, so it took. I will definitely be able to make videos faster and hopefully better, but they do take time. I would ask you, please, please, Check out in the description. I, I have all my links connected. Check them out. If you want to support the channel, you don't have to, but it will definitely help me. If you want to support the channel or contact me in any way outside of, of commenting on the videos, do it there. Check out my links. All right. Thank you for stopping by. Until next time, take care.